So happy new year to all of you, and uh, we want to thank God for how far he has brought us. We thank Auntie Esther for leading service today. The service will conclude with Holy Communion. The message is so going to be on our theme of fruitfulness, and I trust that we shall all be fruitful as we go through this year. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, we want to thank you that you have brought us to the beginning of the year 2023. You are a good God, and we want to thank you that you have watched over us. You have directed our steps as we made our plans. You have cared for us and our families, even in areas in which we did not do too well. You have been gracious. We don't want to remain in the past. We want to move forward in the strength of the Lord, in the might of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so as we begin this year, may your spirit of God guide us through it. Lift us up, O oh God, where we are down. Establish us where we don't know where to turn. It's now time to hear your word that is going to take us through this year. Your word is eternal. So let your Holy Spirit establish your word in our hearts. As we speak, as we listen, let your spirit take your word and minister that word to us. We will conclude the service with Holy Communion. It's a sign of your sacrifice. Lord, you died that we might live. And so we pray that through the word and the sacraments, your children will live and flourish and do well. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. So this year, as I have said, we want to be fruitful. Fruitfulness. And I have chosen two passages. One of them is... Colossians chapter 1, verse 10, and the other is Genesis 1, 28. Usually, we will put the Old Testament before the New Testament, but we very intentionally put Colossians first. The reason is I didn't want people to see fruitfulness simply in terms of um, material things. We want to see fruitfulness in all its dimensions. The first question that we need to ask is, what does it mean to be fruitful? What does it mean to be fruitful? We use the word when we are talking about plants, especially those of you who are interested in flowers. See, we have beautiful uh, bouquet there. Um, if you're interested in flowers, and you go and buy some potted plants you put in your house, you expect that it will do well. Then when your friends visit, they will admire it. God made these things so that we will admire them. And if something is beautiful, you have to appreciate it. So we use fruitfulness when it comes to plants and crops. This is the context of agriculture, if you like. So Jesus cursed a fig tree that was unfruitful. Which means that like plants, like crops, we expect or God expects his people to be fruitful. So this is very much a godly enterprise on which we are embarking. God does not want us to be unfruitful. So we use it in the context of agriculture or plants. We also use fruitfulness when it comes to human reproduction. Human reproduction. Sometimes through some God's own wisdom or some biological things that I don't always understand. Um, some may have children, some do not. Some have passed childbearing age and so on. So that is not the point. The point is that we use fruitfulness in the context of human reproduction. So wombs can be fruitful. And I pray that all wombs will be fruitful. Amen. Including those that are past. <laughs> With God, all things are possible. Uh, so even if you have grandchildren, God can give you. You don't believe me. 
ask Sarah. So we use fruitfulness in that context too. The third, which is one of the very critical areas we are going to focus on, is we use fruitfulness in terms of character. Character. Especially in this day and age in which Christianity has become all about performance and what appeals to the eye. A very senior pastor brought me a book to review for him. He wants to publish it. It's a book of testimonies. And there's something striking about this book. All the testimonies are about material things. There is not a single testimony in that book about somebody encountering Christ like Paul did on the road to Damascus and how we see a moral change in the person's life. Because we've all been carried away by the outward form. Paul tells Timothy there are people who have a form of godliness, but they deny the power of it. Fruitfulness must be seen in character formation. That's how people are able to tell the difference between the church and the world. In our prayer this morning, references have been made to Galatians 5, where Paul talks about the fruit of the Spirit. We will take our time to examine what this means in the course of the year. Then we use fruitfulness in terms of time. Paul tells the Ephesians, in Ephesians 5, 16, redeem the time. Maybe this year, that's what God wants you to do. We spend too much time on unproductive things. Sometimes, it is in the relationship, a relationship that is unprofitable. Sometimes it is a matter that you must let go and you spend time thinking about it and worrying when the scripture has told you, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, let your request be made known unto God. Amen. Because when you redeem time, you become productive. My friends, drop from the agenda anything that does not add value to life. Drop it. If a certain type of friendship is unproductive, drop it. If a certain course of action is unproductive, drop it. If somebody has offended you and you've been pursuing the person in your heart, drop it. And move on with your life. Because you must be productive. And you can't be productive. A gentleman came to see me last week, childhood friend, and we were discussing my work as a seminary head. And he was asking me questions about leadership. And he said to me, do you get, he asked me, do you get the support? I said, yes, some. Some colleagues help. Others are sitting on the fence. Others don't care. I have colleagues who would never respond to anything I put on the faculty platform. I don't waste my time pursuing those matters. So I was telling him, well, his point was that it's a mark of good leadership for you to bring everybody along. I said, that's true. But when somebody refuses to come along, you don't let them detain you. You go ahead. Because if you are waiting for everybody to come along, you will never move. So it is a matter of good leadership for everybody to support you. Jesus abandoned Judas when he refused to come along. 
So you let people detain you. You will never be productive. You have to move. I have a friend who worked for a government establishment for a very long time. And they lived in a government bungalow. This person moved into this bungalow very early. So by the time he was retiring, they had lived in this bungalow for 30 years. And they had built their own house. And in the last year of work, his wife asked them, the family, to move. For the children have left home. Just she, her husband, and one or two households. Shall we move to our new home? So we settle the man had become so comfortable in this government bungalow. He continued to stay there and stay there. So the woman came to complain to me. She said, start moving your things one by one. And then after you have moved all your things, one day after morning devotion, tell him tonight I'm not sleeping here. Go and leave him in the government bungalow. Leave him there. My dear friends, this true story I'm telling you, the woman moved, ourselves moved. Now you wake up in the morning, you ask for food, the food is not coming. On one or sorry, koi. Don't let people detain you who are fixated. The world moves on, doesn't wait for you. So be productive. Don't let things that are not necessary, that are not important. You have heard that somebody has said something about you. The person is not around. You are planning and thinking and waiting, calling for meetings on this simple issue. I nearly said nonsense, but don't let nonsensical things detain you. Move on. And we are expected to be productive in relationships. When I have opportunity to counsel young people who are starting life, especially those getting married, I tell them one of the areas in which you have to develop capital is in relationships. Develop quality relationships. People who will give you good advice. One of the most difficult marriage issues I have settled is a classmate of mine. And as we sat down to discuss the relationship between him and his wife, it was a simple matter that the wife liked entertaining people from everywhere. And says, these are my friends. These are my friends. I can't leave them. Then you have to make a choice. I'm not saying abandon all your friends. But if you have accumulated in your life a body of friends that are becoming a problem in your relationship, then you have to choose. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 6, 16, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. So we use fruitfulness when we are talking about plants, human reproduction, character, time and productivity, and also relationships. We are going to unpack all these things during the year. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 28, which is one of the passages we are going to look at during the year, God blessed them. God blessed you, God blessed me, God blessed humanity, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. Amen. What does it mean? Number one, in the divine economy, fruitfulness begins with God's blessing. If you are cutting any path, going after anything that you know does not have God's blessing on it, abandon it. Because God is not going to bless things he has not approved. Genesis 1.28, 
God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful. That's why Psalm 23 begins with the words, the Lord is my shepherd. In the divine economy, fruitfulness begins with divine blessing. If God's blessing is on it, it may look like nothing. People may even despise it. But in your hands, it will flourish. In your hands, it will flourish when God's blessing is on it. I have a friend who knows I like this one of the secret things I haven't told you about myself. I like Black Joe. You know Black Joe? You know Face the Wall? Okay. Also called what? Okay. I like it a lot. And I have a friend who knows that I like it. So every now and then, she will bring some to Theodora to prepare for me. Yesterday, this Christmas, I haven't received supplies. Just yesterday morning, we met her at an event. And she says to me, Prof, the woman who does the thing, she says the cube is so long that she cannot supply me until after 10 January. Kunkunde. <laughs> because when you taste the woman's kunkunde, you can see that it's different. But this is from a meal that has gotten all kinds of funny names. See, why be surprised that I like it? He wanted me to say either Jollof or something. But it's one of my favorites. So, if God's blessing is on it, this is her business. And the cue is such that I won't get until second week in January. So, it doesn't matter how simple, how ordinary what God has given you looks like to other people. If his blessing is on it, it will flourish. Amen. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Secondly, God knows we are capable of being fruitful. God knows that. Don't overlook your gifts. Don't overlook your talents. Don't despise yourself. Don't put anybody down. God knows that you are capable. Don't fight to be like other people. Cain did that. In the end, he became a murderer. Because if you don't believe in what God has deposited in you, you can never be fruitful. There are areas of ministry that I know in my heart God has not called me to. I don't worry my head over that. I concentrate in the areas that God has given me to do. And you have to do that in the workplace. Don't fight other people over their schedule. Do what you have been trained to do, what you are capable of doing. God knows we are capable of being fruitful. That's why he says, multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. Amen? Say to yourself, I'm capable. You are. You are. Maybe you haven't prayerfully considered your capabilities, but you are. Third, God will supply the resources that will make you fruitful. God will supply the resources that will make you fruitful. He says, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air. These are not human creations. These are God's creations. God supplies. 
And he is giving you and I dominion over the work of his hands. Subdue it. Use them to serve human purposes. God has given us enough in this world for this world to be blessed. It is just greed that has led to suffering in the world today. So God supplies the resources. Psalm 23 Verse 2, he makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. So God supplies the resources. He knows where the green pastures are and he knows where the still waters are. He supplies the resources that will make his children fruitful. And that brings me to the other passage in our theme, Colossians 1, 10, that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord fully pleasing to him as you bear fruit in every good work. In every good work. In every good work. And as you grow in the knowledge of God. That's why the emphasis on the word is important. You become fruitful as you grow in the knowledge of the word. My dear friends, fruitfulness will consist of leading lives that are worthy of the God who has called us and the Jesus who died to save us. So, how are we going to be fruitful? In what areas of life are we going to be fruitful? Be fruitful in your personal moral life. We have been called into a life of holiness. Be fruitful in your personal moral life. Moral uprightness does not come to anybody automatically. You have to work at it. You have to determine not to lie. You have to determine not to be sexually immoral. You have to determine to be truthful. You have to be de- determined to do certain things. To be peaceful. So be fruitful in your personal moral life. Second, be fruitful in being filled with the Spirit of God. Because there is a relationship between the Spirit of God and moral uprightness. Paul says, be, walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. So there is a relationship between the two. Be fruitful in your personal life. Be fruitful in being filled with the Spirit. And the other one that follows fruitfulness in the Spirit is then we begin to flow in the gifts of the Spirit. Third, be fruitful in the work of your hands. I have talked about time, the resources God has given you. Don't dissipate them on unnecessary things. Don't spend money unless you are certain that I am spending for a worthy cause. Be fruitful in the use of resources. Time is a resource. It's not just money. So use time wisely. Don't attend on fruitful meetings. If you see the agenda and there's nothing in it, ask permission and leave. Go and do something fruitful. So don't sleep too much. Wake up in the morning and pray and work. I get I get a bit upset and angry sometimes, especially when my graduate students come to class and the reading for the for the week has not been done. Sometimes just one one article for you to read. Yes, what did you read? Prof, I couldn't read. What did you read? Graduate students. I tell them, if there are 20 of you, I am busier than all 20 of you put together. And I have read it before I came to class. And you tell me you haven't read. And what even gets to me is when you grade their papers and they come to say, I should have gotten an A. A is not for lazy people. So be fruitful and be productive. Young people, 
And recently I told you one of the things that broke my heart when a young man came to my office. You have money in your hands. Because of greed, you invest time, money in betting. Betting. Come from a very noble home. And has accumulated debt to the tune of almost ten thousand, no, seventeen thousand dollars. He came to see me. I said, Right, all the people you owe. You took, I couldn't even show you to the person who brought him to me. How are you going to pay? Betting. 34 years old. And then he tells me, I can't sleep. <laughs> I can't sleep. <laughs> People who bet, <laughs> the devil will not make you sleep. <laughs> so be fruitful. Be fruitful in the work of your hands. Fourth, be fruitful in nourishing others. When you go into people's lives, make a difference. Let people know that you are making a difference in the life of your husband. And let people know that your wife has become a better person since they married you. Don't make people unhappy. Let your children speak about you with pride. And your workplace, let people know that they have become better people associating with you. So be fruitful in nourishing others. Relationships, family life, workplace, and so on. So have an elderly man. He has gone to be with the Lord, the Reverend Yedu Banaman. And he was going to undertake a project. It was a translation. He wanted to write a Bible dictionary. He asked me to do certain things for him. I did it for him. He's an elderly man. When he became a pastor, I, had him, I wasn't even born. But he became a senior friend. He lived in Tema. And any time Reverend Yedu Badman wanted to come to see me, I said, no, Papa, I'll come myself. Then he would say, no, I'm on retirement. So coming to you helps me to use my time. And then the day came for him to launch the book. And he will fix a date. And I'm not available. He wanted to do it on a Sunday. Calvary Method is here. And one day I went to him. I said, Papa, I think you should go ahead. I will pray for you. Then he says something that humbled me at once. He told me I need to be careful. That's what he said. He said, the reason why I'm choosing, I want to choose a date that fits into your calendar is because when I'm doing anything and you are part of it, I feel confident. I didn't know. But that's why he wanted to fix the date that will suit me. I am nowhere near him in age, in ministry, and so on. So he told me, so that told me I need to be careful in relationships. Be fruitful in nourishing others. Let others feel that you are contributing constructively to their lives. Don't make the, the life of your husband bitter or your wife bitter. Don't let them wonder why they made this wrong choice. So the pastor's wife came to see me about a problem with the husband and as she spoke and she broke down crying. In the course of the weeping, she said something. She thought I didn't hear, but I heard it. She said, <laughs> Ma, me no more. They have been married for almost 20 years. I've regretted. After 20 years, don't let people feel that way. Can I get an amen? amen? Friends, be fruitful in, the, in your giving. Give. Give. It's more blessed to give than to receive. So be fruitful in giving. Don't be stingy. If God has blessed you, bless others, bless his church. Amen? That amen is a bit weak. I want to see some fruitfulness in giving. In Colossians chapter 1 verse 6, Paul says he had heard that the gospel 
was bearing fruit and growing among the Colossians. And then he says this, that because of that, because I have heard that the gospel is bearing fruit among you, he says, for this reason, Colossians 1, 9 to 10, for this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Amen. So be fruitful. Let us, let us pray. Let us pray. Just thank God again for 2023. And tell God, I want to be fruitful in my walk with you. I want to be fruitful in the redemption of time. I want to be fruitful in the use of resources. I want to be fruitful in my relationships. I want to be fruitful, O oh God. Pray that God will help you to be fruitful. That's our covenant with him. Today is a Sunday in which we enter into a new covenant with God. I want you to enter into a covenant of fruitfulness with God. That God will make you fruitful. I pray that he will bless the work of our hands. I pray that he will bless our relationships. I pray that by his spirit, we shall be restrained from the unfruitful works of darkness and walk in the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I pray that God will so bless the work of your hands that you'll be able to give and give and give again. Let's pray for those among us who are looking for the fruit of the womb. Let's pray for them. If you know anybody who is looking for the fruit of the womb, it is the beginning of the year. May this be a year of fruitfulness in somebody's life. Mention their name. Ask God to lift up his hand upon them. There are other young people who may be looking for quality relationships. They want to marry, but they are not sure. Because marriage can make you fruitful or unfruitful. It can make you productive or unproductive. Let's pray that God will guide them. Maybe some of them are your children, your nieces, your nephews. Mention them in your prayer that God will direct them to the right persons. I pray that in our year of fruitfulness, we will make productive choices. That our children and grandchildren will make productive choices in their lives, in their choice of partners, in their choice of job. May God bring fruitfulness. I want to thank God that in Christ, he laid down his life. He sowed his life literally in the grave. And he rose again. The resurrection is a symbol of God's fruitfulness. And as Jesus said, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground, it will not grow and blossom and bear fruit. May he bury anything in our lives that need to be buried. And may we rise. May we rise. May we rise as people who have resurrected. Because Jesus has given us an example. So I want to thank you for these symbols of your fruitfulness. Your life was fruitful. 
you lay down that life so that we may experience abundance of life. The devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy, but you come that we might have life and have life in its fullness. And we may have abundant life. Life that is of a certain divine quality. And so this morning we pray that your grace will be on these elements of bread and wine. Your children are going to receive them. We sanctify them, Lord, and set them apart for the use of your children. As we receive them, may we receive strength. May we receive grace. May we be empowered in our year of fruitfulness. We are entering into a covenant of fruitfulness with you. So that in all areas of life, physical and spiritual, we shall be fruitful. Sanctify them, O oh God, for the use of your children and make us fruitful to your glory. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me ask Wafayao, um, is there a second person, Auntie Esther, come, since you are leading worship today, come and help us to um, serve your people. I saw a third person, come, come and join us. Dear friends, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body broken for you. As often as you eat of this, you do it in remembrance of me. Amen. In the same way after supper, Jesus picked the cup and said, this is the blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink of this, you do it in remembrance of me. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Draw near with faith and receive the sacrament to your comfort. Amen. God, our sinners cry, for I have no else to fly. My hope, my only hope's in you, O God, be merciful. Scars know how to pray or speak from fear and weakness. 
Beloved in Christ, the body of Christ broken for us, eat in faith, be thankful in your hearts, remember that Christ died that we might live. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for us, shed for many, for the forgiveness of sins, for our strengthening where we are weak, for our abundance where we lack, for our salvation where we have strayed from him. Drink in faith, be thankful in your heart, remember that Jesus shed his blood for us. Amen. Let us unite our hearts in prayer. And I like in your own heart to thank God that you have shed in this sacrament. We pray that together we will walk in his love and his strength and his grace. That God's fruitfulness will abound to us. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for today, this special day in which we start a new year. We have very consciously obeyed your word and decided to start this year with you. We want to walk in the spirit that we might not fulfill the desires of the flesh. We want to lay aside every sin and weight that clings so closely, looking only to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, so that our lives will be fruitful and you'll bless the work of our hands. Your promise 
is that we should cast all our burdens upon you because you care for us. And so this morning, we cast burdens of ill health. We cast burdens of failing businesses. We cast burdens of a struggling economy. We cast upon you burdens of personal needs that we can't share with anyone. We pray that by the presence of your spirit in our lives, anything of God that is backward and negative will be turned around and we shall see your favor. You will give us a testimony this year in things in which we have lost hope. Lord, restore and renew our hope in you. We know that as long as you live and you are the eternal God, your children can never be on the losing side of things. So may your abundant life be upon us this year. May we have testimonies of fruitfulness. This morning we lift our hands upon the children who are in the service. Lord, bless them. Give them a future. Give them a hope. Pray that nothing that is evil will destroy the future of these children. May they grow up in security and trust. May they grow up to love the things of God. And may your purposes for each of them be fulfilled. We bless your name for this year. And we trust that it will be a happy new year for all of us and our families. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.